my ultimate vision when it comes to being an entrepreneur mm-hmm. would be legacy. Mm, legacy, legacy, legacy. I'm on Jay Z. But yeah, I would say my focus is to create a legacy and help other people create a legacy. I want to have my own school, my own fabric stores, my own sewing machines, like my own Mm. everything, and Mm. really create a space to help black women grow and become the best fashion designers. So my ultimate vision is to to rise up a generation of young Christian creatives that are going hard for God and want to serve him with all his, all their heart. I would love to just have like millions of young adults that just want to serve God and dedicate their Mm. whole brand to God. Like I love it when people DM me saying, hey, like, you know, I love your videos and I want to start my brand and I want to, you know, bring God into it. Or how can I bring God Mm -hmm. into my brand? Or how can I represent God with what I do? If I can inspire us now, to serve God in our purpose and stuff like that, I could really shift the whole dynamic, Definitely. the way the world is going, you know? Mm. That part. So that's what I wanted to do. Ideal plan mm-hmm. or reason behind starting entrepreneurship is really to create freedom. Not for myself, well, myself included, but for my family as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and just making a way for us where there's endless opportunities on the table. There's endless relationships mm-hmm. on the table yeah. too. Whatever field that you want, whatever vision that you have, we have these resources to use in order for you to execute on it mm-hmm. um, and creating something that's impactful, making people remember creatives and appreciate creatives, respect yeah. them and all of that stuff. So get into a point eventually where there's royalty made studios. There's, you know, a school where you can learn how to get into graphic design, how to market mm-hmm. yourself, how to be mm-hmm. a producer or a content creator or, you know, director, any of those things that you would get in creatively and moving in excellence when you do it creating a space where creatives can move in excellence Mm. that's my overall vision and creative freedom for my family well go on can i get y'all wait if we didn't start yet we started oh okay never mind (laughs) we We started already let's get into it Uh, let's get into it what we doing what are they doing you know what we're doing Is Ziggy 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 Zao Zaga Zao Zaga Zao? Yeah, we about to do something new, try something new, do something different. You know, you know, Bumble Club. Bumble Club, Bumble Club, Bumble Club, Walk One, Walk One. So today we have Ziggy here. Trey, no, no Bruno, no Bruno, he no here. This is a Spanish Jamaican. I'm like, what accent are you doing? Where are you from? We from the islands, island boy. One more time, one more time, one more time, one more time. What we doing one more time? The handshake, one more time, one more time. time, 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 time. Yeah, that was awkward. Yeah, all right, so today we are trying something new with Ziggy. Jada, Jada, Wada, Wada, Yanni, 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 Yanni. Let's get it, let's get it. So we got these cards right here. And this is the Grand Pains cards. Pick a card, any card. Me girl, bad girl, rude girl, bop, bop, bop. So let's get into it. Hold on, I'm not supposed to be looking at it. <laughs> All right. So do y'all do we pick, pick one, one card? Yeah. Y'all want to each or one? Yes, yeah, the one each. Yeah. All right. Pick a card, any card. Pick Close a down. card, any card. Any card. Any card. Let's don't go. Don't look. Yeah, don't look. These are nice. These, right. Yeah. I wow. like a blessing. Do y'all want these growing pain cards? He keeps them for you. Let and us your friends. know. Let us know. Oh, they could Please. be a card game, no card. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Let's get. Oh, I'm looking at the card again. Do you oh, want to be the goodness. first to get a set of growing pains cards? Let us know. Let us there know. All right. So we all got us. Who going first? Not it. I'll go. Jada, way that you go. Okay, so my question says, <laughs> what's your? <laughs> It That's looks like Trey has re-entered <laughs> the chat. <laughs> Trey just came back. We back in the building. We back in the spot. Let's get it. All right, you go ahead. So, <laughs> what is your ultimate vision or purpose in in being or becoming an entrepreneur? Your ultimate vision for becoming an entrepreneur. Oh, okay. Okay. Wait, what is, is that for all of us to answer or just yeah. Jada? 
All of us. Uh, well, yeah. you can start first. It's your question. Okay. Um, my ultimate vision slash purpose in becoming an entrepreneur or being an entrepreneur. I would have to say that my ultimate vision in <laughs> Go ahead. my ultimate vision when it comes to being an entrepreneur mm-hmm. would be legacy. Mm, legacy, legacy, legacy. I'm on Jay Z. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I would say my focus is to create a legacy and help other people create a legacy. I want, I've talked uh, about it multiple times as mm. far as what I want for Jael, but my vision for my brand is to truly be able to, well, for Jael, is. For it to create a legacy for my family, um, my grandkids, my kids, 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 kids. And I also look at Jael as being a light in multiple ways. So for one, I want it to be a light to my family. I hope that in some way or somehow it could show them what God has done in my life. Um, and maybe encourage them to pursue their own relationship with God just because God has done a lot for me. Would you say that your brand is like a is a Christian fashion brand or is Yeah, because brand? what I want to do with my fashion shows, my fashion shows will be centered around God, my collections will be centered around God. I just don't, don't really know how to incorporate God in like the designs. Mm-hmm. Uh well, like customer like one-on-one stuff, like how to incorporate more meaning and purpose into that. But God has already shown me as far as with my collections and my fashion shows, Mm -hmm. he's already shown me how he's going to be involved in that. Mm -hmm. Like what it looks like for a what a fashion show about God or that displays the beauty of God, like what that looks like. Mm -hmm. So that part, I I feel like it's easier. But since I I haven't done my collection, a collection in a while um, since 2021, I feel like I haven't been able to showcase something like that, but I know the collection that he has me working on now, that'll be uh, similar to how I did Testimony Collection, which basically told the story of my salvation and how God helped me and changed me and things like that. And so that's what I see for my brand. God showed me, God showed me that. My brand is since I create these really beautiful pieces, it's going to attract all different types of people, especially because it's not a whole people, a whole lot of people that look like me that do the type of things I know how to do. Mm -hmm. And so I would attract all different types of people from all over the world who want to come and see these beautiful pieces, these amazing fashion shows that are super well produced. But then they'll see the beauty of God when they when they're there, you know. And so that's what I know. Uh, that's what I know the vision is for my fashion shows and my collections, but I don't really know how to incorporate God when I'm working with clients because sometimes it's not always directly working with clients. Sometimes it's I'm talking to a stylist. I don't, I don't even get to necessarily talk to the actual mm-hmm. person it's for, or I don't know how to always establish a connection with clients to kind of be a light in that way. Like sometimes we talk and God could come up, but not always. Yeah. So yeah, but that that's my ultimate vision for Jael oh and for Ellis Sewing Company. I want to have my that. own school, so. my own fabric yes. stores, Whoa. my own sewing machines, like my own mm. everything and mm. really create a space to help black women grow and become the best fashion designers. Hey, y'all, what's up? I know you're enjoying the episode, but real quick, we wanted to take a second to talk to y'all. Hey, pull out your phones right now and text the word GP Crew to the number down below. Let's get it. Go do that right now. You're going to get updates about new drops, events, and so much more. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Now let me get back behind the camera. Let's get it. That's good. So, yeah. Uh, it's a thought came to my mind. It's mm-hmm. kind of random, but... Wouldn't it be cool if, like, when we get to heaven, you get to design the clothes? <laughs> that would be cool. I feel like heaven will be set up in a way for everybody to use their gifts, though. Bruh. But it's not based off of money. You know what mm. I was thinking? What? I would love to be the, the content creator. Of- <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> I'd be like, ooh, Jesus posts like this real quick. <laughs> 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 that would be lit, though. Making Jesus content, I'm going to do his Literally. <laughs> and a flyer. Definitely. Come to the game. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> that would be funny. We do a fruit. Come on, y'all pull up. <laughs> it's a show about heaven that's, it's not 
necessarily, I don't think it's biblical, but I always thought it was interesting because it made me think about what heaven Mm -hmm. would be like. like, But then it said that you get the option to leave heaven, not go to hell, Mm -hmm. but just like to disappear. Mm -hmm. Because everyone had been in heaven so long, it was like they eventually, not that they got bored, but it was like everything, you get everything you want in heaven. And Mm -hmm. I said in a bad way, but... Oh, it's like so much stuff to enjoy, experience. And it's like once you've experienced it all, like say it's been hundreds of years. That's what it was like. Like they had been in heaven so, so long. Mm -hmm. And then they're like, well, I think I'm good. I'm ready for my soul to just disappear. And so it would let them like just go go disappear, like finally dissolve. Because they're like heaven is eternal. So it's like what if you get – it's almost like they created as if you would get bored after Bruh, being there, God up there eternally, you're not gonna get bored. <laughs> nah, definitely. <laughs> you're not like, come sorry. do this. You over there, boy? Yeah. <laughs> what was the uh, question? Oh, uh, what's your ultimate vision or purpose in becoming an entrepreneur or being an entrepreneur? You go. Oh, okay. So, for me, I would say my ultimate vision is to, ooh, to rise up a generation of young. Christian creatives, young people, like when I say young, I'm talking about young adults or our age, yeah. mm-hmm. maybe 18, 16, yeah. till up to like 25. Mm-hmm. That's like my target audience. But people around that age that are going hard for God and want to serve him with all his, all their heart. Mm-hmm. Like I just be thinking how if we look at our generation now, mm-hmm. It's pretty much all the same. Like, they all, you know, they all on TikTok, you know, like, they probably listen to the same music. Of course, it's different types. Right? They be doing the hits. (laughs) (laughs) But it's like, it's like a, like, it's not a lot of young adults who are doing different stuff. Yeah. You don't like people to shake that? Shake their hips? No. I mean, I can shake my hips. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I I would love to just have like millions of young adults that just want to serve God and dedicate their mm-hmm. whole brand to God. Like, I love it when people DM me saying, hey, like, you know, I love your videos and I want to start my brand and I want to, you know, bring God into it. Or how can I bring God mm-hmm. into my brand? Or how can I represent God with what I do? Mm-hmm. Like, I just love that so much because I look at it like this. It's two different kingdoms on this world, right? Yeah. There's the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of God. Yeah. 95%, I won't say 95, I won't put a percent on it. But it's a large majority of this world that is serving kingdom of darkness. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, imagine if... We and it's like young adults, like we're the next generation, like we're about to start, you know what I'm saying, uh, running the stores, and like we're the next adults, yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. So I'm like, if we if I can inspire us now to serve God in our purpose and stuff like that, then that way, imagine I could really shift the whole dynamic, Definitely. the way the world is going, you know, yeah. that part. So that's what I want to do. I love that. <laughs> that's good. I, I feel as though, why well, I know. That my ideal plan mm-hmm. or reason behind starting entrepreneurship is really to create freedom, not for myself, well, myself included, but for my family as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and just making a way for us where there's endless opportunities on the table, there's endless relationships mm-hmm. on the table yeah. too. Whatever field that you want, whatever vision that you have, we have these resources to use in order for you to execute on it. Mm-hmm. Um, and creating something that's impactful, making people remember creatives and appreciate creatives respect them and all of that stuff so get into a point eventually where there's royalty made studios there's you know a school where you can learn how to get into graphic design how to market Mm. yourself how to be Mm -hmm. a producer or a content creator or you know director any of those things that you would get in creatively and moving in excellence when you do it you feel me so that's what i would do is that's my overall goal is creating Finding a group of people and content creators and creatives that are moving in excellence that want to continue yeah. being great and seek <coughs> more for themselves. They don't want to stay complacent. Mm-hmm. There's so many creators where I'll see see them and, you know, maybe it works for them. But 
the creators where they're just doing the bare minimum, doing the same yeah. exact designs, doing the same exact same work. Same marketing. That they, same marketing. Yeah. Is, like nothing is moving the needle for you. are not thinking outside the box. Yeah. Yeah. So creating a space where creatives can move in excellence, mm. that's my overall Ooh. vision and creative yeah. freedom for my family. You just reminded me. For it. Can I add to mine? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> so... That's so crazy how all of us want to have schools. Like, that <laughs> is so crazy. But I, I also want to have, like, a whole campus of, um, like, I want to have a whole campus mentoring young adults that's getting in their purpose. Like, literally helping them. Okay, you ran into this You just problem. reminded me of something, too. <laughs> okay, continue. <laughs> Okay, you ran into this problem, bet. This is how you do it. Oh, you want to learn how to market? Like, we're going to have marketing. We're going to have a class on how you can represent God in the best way. Mm-hmm. How you can stand strong in your faith while owning a business. I how you can create, a, like, bro, just a whole campus filled with, like, Christian artists, Christian uh, painters, clothing brands. Yeah. Everything, mm-hmm. bro. Like we're doing a yeah, awesome. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I love that. Uh, you just reminded me something else that I know I really want to do is I want to have like a purpose fund. Mm-hmm. Um, and basically, I've always enjoyed helping people with their businesses or giving them ideas <laughs> and things like that. And so I know I would want to start a purpose fund. And basically, I would. People would come to me, say they have an idea of uh, what they want to do or build or what their purpose is. <laughs> what? I'm sorry, y'all. We were trying to, do, we have somebody going live for us and we were trying to tell him to turn it off. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry. I was so confused. He's like, <laughs> I was so crazy. <laughs> I was trying to mouth it without interrupting. <laughs> sorry, Jada. It's okay. I'm but sorry. it's Aww. okay. Aww. 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 <laughs> go ahead. All right, go ahead. Okay, for it. so purpose fun. I would want to like basically be able to fund people's businesses and uh whatever their dreams are, whatever that may look like. Um just how I feel like sometimes we have moments where we need funding for our businesses or our ideas. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to be that for other people and just be a resource to them, help them put together, Mm. um, put together their dream, make it more clear for them or help them pull different pieces together. And then once they have that full idea, helping them actually execute and giving them the funding and things like that, that they need. So that's something I really want to do. I've all, and I used to even always say that, um, I used to always say, even when it came to my family, mm-hmm. well, I know when I make it and I'm really up for real, I would say, oh, I want to be able to invest in my, my siblings, yes. like their crafts, their purposes, my parents. I want to be able to invest into what they're already doing mm-hmm. because I feel like a lot of people have great ideas. They just may need the money. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. And I truly believe that creatives or just anybody not when I say creatives, I mean, fashion Mm -hmm. graphics you know Mm -hmm. video production Mm -hmm. all of that stuff i believe that we tend to sometimes belittle ourselves in a sense Mm -hmm. and not take what we're worth instead we just take what we can get so yeah an example would be as a designer or as anybody you can be the most talented but there's somebody that's not as talented as you but they make it way more mm. bank than you they got their systems mm. in place they mm. have a whole team where somebody i'll even give myself as an example somebody somebody like me i don't have a team right yeah. now so it's just all me doing the work and so that requires me to charge more that requires me to promote myself mm. more yeah and work when harder yeah mm-hmm. when you're a solopreneur it's not really much that you you're able to do much but it's only a certain amount how far you can go. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yourself, there's a certain yeah. ceiling that you can go to. <clears throat> and so th- it gets to a point where, you know, there's somebody who is less talented, but they have more opportunities on the table. They're receiving more things. And it's not a thing of comparison, yeah. but it's more so a thing of, you know, just a lot of creators we we can get in our own minds. And, mm-hmm. you know, we could be like, oh, I don't really like this or just being too hard on yeah. ourselves. So when I do create that community, I would like to you know, get people through that mental phase yeah. and get them out of that and, you know, just let them be able to freely create. You said painting, mm-hmm. like all of that stuff, production, mm-hmm. you know, content creation, uh, filming, art, like all of that stuff. How can we help creatives, you know, yeah. get yeah. out of that space? <laughs>
Hey, what's good? It's your boy Travion from the Growing Pains Podcast. Hear me out. If you would like to promote your dope products in our episodes that last forever, I'm going to need you to go ahead and email us to receive our sponsorship package deals. Now, let's get back to the episode. It's something else that I was that came to my mind when you were saying that. It's something I deal with sometimes mm-hmm. is I box my thinking a lot. Mm-hmm. So it's so weird. So if I know I have to have a photo shoot, I'm like, okay, this is the box. Mm. Or if I know I need to create like something for a client or something mm-hmm. where I'm doing something for a client, I'm like, okay, this is the boundaries. And I feel like that leads me into sometimes having like a creative block mm-hmm. because I'm trying to think within the walls around me instead yeah. of stepping out of the norm, stepping out of my comfort zone or doing something different. Definitely. Yeah. And that's something I'm actually, you know, trying to work on. We're well, not trying because we don't say trying around here. Yeah. That's something I'm working on right now is stepping out the box, doing stuff differently. Yep. Like everybody, okay, th- and that's what I when people I tell me like, oh, I have a clothing brand. Okay, everybody, everybody can start a clothing brand. Yeah. Everybody can be a fashion designer. Everybody can be a graphic mm-hmm. designer. But what are you doing that's different? Exactly. Okay, like for an example, if you look at other people in your industry, this is the box. You see, everybody market the same way. Everybody exactly. DMs. Everybody mm-hmm. does this. But what can you do that's different that makes you stand out from the rest? Mm-hmm. Because I feel like those are the people that are successful. For instance, like Apple, they stepped outside of the yep. box. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Um, and so, yeah, that's what I'm working on now with through content, presenting my brand differently. Like you, every, anybody can have a photo shoot, but how can I make my photo shoot differently Definitely. with props and actually showing a exactly. concept? So, yeah. the, the people who aren't afraid to break the door yeah. down, mm-hmm. They're the ones that They're actually get through. Ones. No, because for sure. Because you will have somebody that will sit there focused on, how am I going to get this done? How am I going to do this? And rather than figuring out who can I who, you yeah. know, connect to yeah. that's going to get me to the next level? Who mm-hmm. do I need a business coach? Do I need you know some another creative to hear their experiences and hear the yeah. lessons mm-hmm. that they've been through? And so the people who are just willing to fail first and then mm. you know figure out yeah. on the way they're gonna be more successful than a person who just continues to focus on how is it gonna get done mm. yeah. yeah taking it back to something you said a couple minutes ago <laughs> that you made me think about yeah so you were talking about uh not being the most talented but mm-hmm. th- those people may be getting more opportunities or things like that yeah and i can relate to that because that was me um, I tell my students all the time and I tell them this so they can relate to me and understand that you don't have to be born the most talented designer or whatever. I will always tell them and show them my work before was trash. It yeah. really was mm. not that good. Mine was and trash. <laughs> like <real. laughs> I used to have like friends slip up and tell me stuff like they would accidentally say I wasn't that good and they'd be like, oop. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> yeah, wild. like like I had moments like that with friends um and I used to feel like really bad about myself for because I really love fashion design, but my ideas were not always there. My creativity wasn't always there. My my designs were really like very subpar. But once I decided to start putting in work and literally working and dedicating my time towards my craft, I and I love thinking about this time period because I went from a season of people always comparing me to others or making me feel like this person is better than you or even saying, oh, are you trying to be like this designer? Are you Mm -hmm. trying to be like this designer? Mm -hmm. I went from that season to now I've created my own lane. Now they don't they don't compare me to anybody else. It's Mm. like, I have my own look. Exactly. And so I was one of the people that was less talented. There were a lot of people who, uh, and I'm not saying I'm the most talented now, but I put in the work for my skill to actually improve. Mm. And you can see the fruit of that. And so I feel like that may be helpful for a lot of creatives. If you feel like your work isn't the best, or maybe there are a bunch of other people who are more creative than you or more talented than you, where your talent is right now doesn't define your craft. Mm -hmm. Your craft, your creativity, your creativity can grow. Just like how everything in life has the capability to grow, your creativity can grow. Your ideas can grow. They can become 
uh, much more, much better than what they are now, you know? So, yeah. yeah. I definitely had that experience with graphics. Mm -hmm. When I first started, I was trash, and mm -hmm. I knew it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a lot of my yeah. family and friends, they were lying, like, oh, that's good. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> I'm like, nah, you lying. Bro, for I, so real. I'm, I had to keep working, and so now... I'm currently at a point, or I'll even say it in that moment real quick. So as I, I was really bad at graphics, <laughs> it was bad because I'm looking at all these other designers and I'm like, dang, he got more detail in this. <laughs> he got more details in this yeah. design. You know, the reason why my my brand colors for Royal Team Media is black and white. Mm -hmm. And the reason why is because my weakness as far as graphic goes has been uh, color, like color palettes, mm. how to make colors complement complement yeah. to, to each other um and so that has been my biggest weakness in graphics and that's what mm -hmm. i've learned of like okay you gotta try new things maybe put pink and red together for valentine's yeah. day that's gonna look good or you know put red and white together for start with the basic stuff and mm -hmm. then move forward and so now i'm at a point where okay yeah. i know how to make the graphics but how can i make it even more realistic mm -hmm. how can i make the designs even better compared to movie posters and other stuff that I get inspired mm -hmm. by. I get inspired by a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. If I'm in the airport and I see um, just the signs of different flyers and stuff, I get inspired by all of that. So it's just what is it going to take for me to learn and continue learning? And as a creative, you have to keep going. Yeah. You have to keep learning and keep teaching yourself. You may not need you know, somebody to hold your hand the whole way through. You can ask a couple questions and then figure it mm -hmm. out on your own. That's yeah. what I did with graphics. Mm -hmm. Over time, I just start asking different people, oh, how you do that? All right, bet you don't got to tell me nothing else. I'm going to learn the rest yeah. on my own. Mm -hmm. You feel me? I got a question. Oh. What's up? Okay, I, I wanted to say that I relate with both of y'all. Mm -hmm. Like, when I first started my brand, bro, <laughs> it's terrible. Like, I don't even know how I got yeah. sales, honestly. <laughs> I was wondering why I didn't get sales. Now I know yeah. clothes was trash. But, um, and it's crazy how much you can, but at the time, I knew it was not good. Mm -hmm. I remember this one time, I door dashed all week, mm -hmm. bro, from 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. I am working those streets, getting those <laughs> hips, boy, <laughs> right? <laughs> And so I'm like, bet I got enough. I'm gonna do this job. Who do you want to put no work in? Mm -hmm. Right? I order the blanks because, you know, I didn't have enough resources to go the screen printer route. So I had to do the mm -hmm. vinyl and stuff. Yeah. I get, I go with the blanks. It was like springtime. No, it was wintertime. So I'm like, okay, get some hoodies. And I didn't know you're supposed to sample the hoodies before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wholesale it. Yeah. So I wholesale the hoodies. They <laughs> came in. I'm marketing it, have my photo shoot. I'm, you know, putting the work yeah. in. Next thing you know, I drop, didn't get no sales. But Dang. I'm wearing a hoodie. I start seeing a whole bunch of balls come up on the hoodie. Y'all know how uh, it is. Yeah. Yes. You know how when you wear a hoodie for too yes. long, it start getting all them little balls on it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm like, bruh, I cannot so? sell yeah. this. And on top of that, I got a vinyl on it. Yeah. <laughs> like, they want to try. They want to block me. <laughs> like. So I'm like, oh, no. So I was so discouraged because I'm like, mm -hmm. I worked so hard mm -hmm. for this drop yeah. just for it to go to waste, right? Yeah. But I'm glad I didn't let that stop me. And then Definitely. I kept pushing. You can't let it stop I just, you. I just had to learn from it. I'm like, okay, bet. Moving it's forward. It's a scripture about that. Well, okay. He's talking. I'm going to see if I can find it. Okay. I'm like, okay, bet. Learn from it. Boom. Make sure you sample the product before you wholesale. Okay, mm -hmm. boom. Don't use vinyl on clothes because it's going to peel off. Um, Zell, I know, yeah. I know <laughs> you probably know. Yeah. <laughs> They cool for a little design yeah. if you got like a birthday party, but if you have a clothing brand, mm -hmm. it's gonna shrivel up. Yeah, it's gonna shrivel up. It's gonna start peeling. Your customers gonna be sending you pictures on Instagram talking about some refund. So mm -hmm. that's what I learned. But now <laughs> on to the next question. Yeah, because we getting into yeah. it. <laughs> so wait, but with Jada, when you find the verse, let us know. I got you. All right, bet. So the next question is: What's one pivotal moment in your twenties, and what lesson did you learn? Pivotal moment. I just started my 20s. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I mean, I so back in the, the... Oh, yeah. Y'all like Jada, six months in. That's why she be having all these stories. She, <laughs> told, she no already in her 20s. She's deep teller. in there. <laughs> no, for real. Um, but I do have... I actually did learn some things, though. Yeah, and you I said have. a pivotal moment. A pivotal moment. Okay. In your own, you know, right that you had to... Something that you had to do with on your own. 
Y'all go first. Y'all go first. Dang, <laughs> that's Gilbert's. crazy. I Here just turned 20. I think I'm the youngest. No, like, yeah, nah. you are. But, um, I found a scripture. Go okay. Ahead. Um, let me pull up a different, not a, a, a simpler uh, version. version. Yeah. yeah <laughs> Let's see, but it's Philippians. She <laughs> is <laughs> literally. <I'll> see. <laughs> so it's Philippians. Three, um, on Philippians three. Right. <laughs> I'm still on Genesis. <laughs> Let's see. Three, 14, or is it 13 and 14? Yeah, 13 and 14. Everybody put their Bibles out. <laughs> Turn to Philippians. I'm crying. So it says, my friends, I don't feel I have already arrived, but I forget what is behind and mm. I struggle for what is ahead. I run toward the goal so I can win the prize of being called to heaven. That's good. This is the prize that God offers because of what G- Jesus Christ has done. But I remember reading this scripture uh, because it talked about um, when it talks about the other version of it talks about forgetting what is behind and straining towards what's ahead, like pressing towards the goal. Mm-hmm. And I remember when I was going through that whole period of like realizing, dang, you're really not that good and you need to put in more work so your craft can be better. Mm-hmm. It kind of just made me think about, okay, like forget what's behind. Forget all the work that you've created before. Yeah. Focus on what you're moving yeah, towards, yeah. you know. Yeah. Forget all the bad dresses you done made, all them ugly designs. That is the past. Mm-hmm. Focus on what you're moving towards. Press forward towards yeah. what you're moving towards. And I like that because it makes for a good story. Yes. Like, who wants to be perfect the whole way? Definitely. For sure. For sure. Yeah. I know for sure I ain't perfect. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> no. true. So that's why we're about to get in this 20s question because that's yes. been the pivotal moment. <laughs> Definitely. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Aw. Aw. <laughs> every kiss begins with K. Not every kiss begins with K. <laughs> All right. Y'all want me to go? Yeah. yeah, Trey, you go. I feel as though a pivotal moment in my life has been really just figuring out me. What's my triggers? Mm. What's something that, you know, makes me happy? What truly makes me happy aside from work mm-hmm. and aside from the mm-hmm. dreams that I'm achieving Mm -hmm. and going after you feel me so my work i'm realizing that my work does not define me Mm. and that you know that's not all of who i am Mm -hmm. you feel me i have to learn of who trevion is without that if that was removed today if i didn't have no hands no legs no feet and i can't do no graphics on the laptop Mm -hmm. yeah where am i going to go and where am i going to move on in life without graphics or without podcasting who am i at the core so that's what I'm learning in my 20s. And when I say triggers, what gets me upset? What triggers me to act a certain way? What triggers mm-hmm. me to not speak up for myself? What triggers yeah. me to, you know, not avoid confrontation? That when part. There's something simple as just speaking up and letting somebody know, hey, you did me wrong here. I mm-hmm. ain't like that. I want to keep you in my life. But if boundaries. Keep, yeah, like boundaries. Mm-hmm. If you're going to keep disrespecting me, if you're going to keep, you know, treating me a certain way, it's like, all right, we got to. Some got to change. Yeah, we got to sure. move on. Yeah. You feel me? So that's what I've learned in my 20s and learning that, you know, who I am today, I will be far past that in the next 10, Definitely. 20 years. You feel me? Mm-hmm. It's been really a, a tough ride just due to habits and, you know, de- depression, all of that stuff. Mm. But I realize over time it gets better. The more you experience, that the part. more you learn, you have more of a spreadsheet of, all of your good days and your bad days you feel me mm-hmm. so the more you continue to grow the more you continue to live on then you'll be fine over time because you learned this lesson you've been through this before already so there's nothing that can stop you if you already had you know a whole 10 years 20 years 30 years of 365 days and there's been more good than bad or even you're still living to this day. You yeah. have breath in your lungs. You should be fine to keep moving on no matter what mm, comes your way. So that's, that's what I learned in my 20s so far. That's okay. good. <laughs> <laughs> Jada, I, what did you I learn? have a lot to say. I'm trying to <laughs> narrow it down. Yeah, I was trying to narrow it down. Um, I've been through some. I feel like I've had a lot yeah, of like, pivotal <laughs> moments. <laughs> I've been through some things. Good Lord. In the past couple said, months. Oh, God, how am I going to get through this now? <laughs> Is that the grandpa voice now? 
I that guess is his so. grandpa that's voice. Grandpa. All his voices. <laughs> <laughs> what voice are you talking about today? No, for real. <laughs> <laughs> what you learned, Jada? I feel like I've learned a lot. I'm trying to think. I've had a lot of pivotal moments. Um, relationships. Exactly. In all areas. Faith. Money, faith, relationships, friendships. Ooh, I'm learning about money. Me too. Adults in this ghetto. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. Listen. Every time I blink, I pay <laughs> the bill. God damn it. Literally. <laughs> Got to pay a bill over here, pay a bill Phone over here. Bill. It's on, like man. we could do a whole episode about adulting right. and just 20s. Like, yeah, it's li- like life lessons like, You got to pay for maintenance on your car. Right. <laughs> hey, y'all. It's Jada from Growing Pains Podcast. And guess what? We are now offering ad placements for our episodes. So if you have shoes, candles, wigs, food, whatever it may be, if you want to see it featured on an episode, all you have to do is email us and ask about our sponsorship ad placement packages and we'll send that information over to you. Now back to the episode. You like gotta you get oil like pains? learning yourself. Oil exactly. I just paid for the car note. <laughs> now I gotta pay for the tie. Tie be four hundred dollars. One tie. No, for real. Not real. even a whole set. All it's right, one pom, pom, tie. Tray. That's crazy. <laughs> that just stresses me. I gotta go Literally. to the car. <laughs> but hey, it's a good thing that you can pay it though. It is. Definitely. Because I be so about careful yesterday. about like saying stuff like that. Cause I be feeling guilty like afterwards. Yeah. I'll be like, I'll be like, but you know, I helped you with that. I'll be like, you right, God. Yeah, yeah. I have, I'm not going to lie. I can't say that. Since I've been 20, I have... Ooh. <laughs> Since I've been 20, I have been able to maintain a life through my passion and my mm-hmm. business. So I'm grateful for that. God That's good. good. Praise God. Praise, Praise God. God. I did, yeah. nah, definitely. That's good, though. <laughs> um, okay, a pivotal moment. Um... <laughs> <laughs> so much. I'm All trying right. to also think Name about top two. Okay, so one was getting saved. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, that was in your twenties. Mm-hmm. Okay. I was twenty-one. Yeah, I was twenty-one. Okay, twenty-one. Twenty-one. Can you, Can you do something for me? <laughs> You're supposed to sing it. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, getting saved. That was um. Uh, a pivotal moment. That was number one for yeah. sure. Everything changed after I got saved. Uh, and not saying I became perfect. I still messed up a bunch after that. But after I got saved, it's like a whole just new door. I was exposed to a whole new world. Everything changed. Oh, like, no. <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't hold it. Um, oh. Aw. No. <laughs> my uh, pastor was talking about this past weekend about um when god up is upgrading you sometimes when he's upgrading you he'll he'll change your circle and things like that and i feel like that's one of the things that started to change after i got saved uh self i became self-aware so much stuff uh uh happened like just internal things started mm, to yeah. change uh more clarity more vision so that was a very big pivotal moment Mm. um it made me realize that giving your life to god isn't just it's not supposed to just be this thing that you say and it's like Mm. oh okay like whatever i'm good to go into heaven now Mm. but i'm grateful for when i got saved because it was during covid Oh, me too. Uh, yeah. I feel like a lot of people got saved during COVID. Yeah, or that 20, your definitely. 2020. And so I was able to really allow God in to, like, change me, mm, yeah. work on me, build a relationship with him. And so that was very pivotal for me. And then next after that, I had this moment where I kind of just I woke up out of the matrix and all right, Matrix. <laughs> <laughs> and I just had this awakening moment of realizing that I deserve better. I deserve better when it comes to people, mm. relationships, friendships, how I treat myself, especially. Mm. That's good. Um, realizing that I deserve better was super pivotal because that took me, a, I didn't realize that till last year. Um, and it took me a long time to get to that point. And if y'all could see like the real me, like a couple years ago, because before there was this me that I kind of 
that it was like Jada that's for show, but then who is Jada when she's really at home? Mm-hmm. And how the Jada, how I treated myself when I was like really at home was so terrible. Like I did not take care of myself. Um, I, I treated myself like crap. And it reflected in all areas of my life, like literally every single area. And so realizing that I deserve better, that has been like one of the the most pivotal things uh, that's happened recently, like in the past year or so. Mm -hmm. Um, And it wasn't like, oh, I deserve better. So I just automatically start treating myself better. But everything flows from that. Um, It's another way of just saying you deserve better, basically like loving yourself, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Everything flows from that, what you allow in your life, how you treat yourself, how you treat the things that belong to you. Um, Everything, I feel like, flows from how you view yourself, Mm. what you think you deserve. Mm. Like, we... When we undercharge ourselves, like, uh, of our prices with our clients, yeah. mm-hmm. it's because we think that's what we deserve. For if sure. you really felt like you deserved more money, then you would have no problem standing on whatever price. If you want to say $5,000, $10,000, so you would stand on it because you know that's what you deserve. Um, when it comes to being in, like, tough situations, bad relationships, bad mm-hmm. friendships, uh, even issues with parents, mm-hmm. you would have no problem saying what you need to say or set setting certain boundaries because you know what you deserve and that is priority you know and so realizing that i deserve better was a very pivotal moment for me and it's been like a slow journey Mm -hmm. but more and more i'm like doing better for myself i'm doing more for myself i'm taking more care of myself Mm -hmm. Uh, i just had a conversation with a friend's mom the other day and she was like that and God gave me a revelation of mm-hmm. it's like a it's almost like this order of priorities that I had. And so it would be like a lot of times it would be like clients and mm-hmm. orders mm-hmm. is at the top. And then um, after that, dang, I forgot what I put at number two. But then it would be like me and God at the bottom. So how true you put. At yeah, that moment? yeah. 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 So it, I forgot what I put for number two. But it was for three and four. Me and God were at the bottom as mm-hmm. far as like. Say if something comes up with clients or orders, I'll put that over everything else that I have to do. Like, oh, let me take this on. Let me do this. But why don't you why don't you have enough um, care for yourself to say, well, I I'm, I'm, I set these appointments with myself. I told myself I was supposed to have therapy this week. I told myself I was supposed to work out four I days like this that week. That builds confidence. Yeah. When you stick to what you say. That builds exactly that consistent activity and pouring into yourself definitely builds that confidence mm-hmm. because even what you said of underpricing yourself mm-hmm. you're only doing that because you know that if you have that boldness you're gonna back down eventually definitely so it's like again let me take what i can get yeah so when you take what you can get then you're teaching somebody, oh, I can treat them this way because yep. I know they're going to let this slide. Oh, if I don't pay them, they're not going to say nothing. Mm. They're going to be Ooh. struggling to ask me a question. I deal yep. with that all the time, Taking, making excuses. <laughs> oh, well, I didn't do that much work. I still did the work. Yeah. I still showed up for you before I showed up for myself. Yep. And that has nothing to do with them. That's not their fault. That's what I decided exactly. to do. Exactly. But if I decided to do that, then I'm going to reciprocate the fruits of my labor yeah you feel me so i definitely agree with that you have to have respect for yourself and you know put in i've in 2020 Mm -hmm. when y'all were talking about getting saved i was putting everybody before me yeah not eating all that stuff thankfully i was young enough to still be in good health and not you know be to the point where i'm having these severe problems of not eating and not drinking enough Mm -hmm. water Mm -hmm. and all of that stuff you know it's crazy how and we and we talked about this before of what is what is it from your childhood or what is it that keeps you in that limited space of oh I can't attain this or you know I won't do this or I'm gonna stay humble I'm gonna back down mm-hmm. I'm not gonna show my full self I'm not gonna blossom into the person that I'm supposed to be what is it that's holding you back in your mind mentally and keeps replaying in your head over and over until right. you realize oh I can think a new way now you know yeah. what I mean so that it takes time and. Being in your 20s, it's going to be a learning process the whole way through. That (laughs) part. Every time you think you know yourself, something else is going to change about you eventually. Definitely. (laughs) That part, yeah, for real. You're constantly changing Mm -hmm. and evolving. For sure. What was the question? (laughs) It was, what's one pivotal moment um, in your 20s and what's one lesson that you learned? And then you could do your 
your yeah. question okay. to I read yeah. it, so I kind of cheated. But <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so something I've learned mm-hmm. um, recently because I just turned twenty in February, but it's to change my self talk, mm. change the way I talk to myself. Um, for the longest time, like I remember in high school, I would just be so negative towards myself. Like, yeah, I really did not like. I liked myself, but I talked to myself as if I didn't like myself. Mm-hmm. Like during certain moments when I did things that I didn't want to do, or when I was doing some, or when I didn't do something that I, that I really wanted to do, mm-hmm. or just these moments where a better version of my, I saw a better version of myself, and it's like the current stage I'm in isn't doing what I That'd see be myself worst. doing. Yep. I would get so mad at myself, like when I slip up or, you know what I'm saying, when I do things that I know I shouldn't be doing. It's just like, I would just be so net. Like, mm-hmm. I would critique myself so much. Yep. Just pick, 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 pick with myself so much. Like, it'll just be the littlest thing. And I'm just going at it, waging war with my own self in my mind. Like, it's almost like I've really, you know how most people be like, oh, like, this one teacher, she was my worst enemy. Or I had this one yeah. person. I was my own worst enemy. Mm. Growing up, I was my own. I was always at it with myself. Like, it was yeah. really always me versus me growing up. And so, recently, I've just been like, how, like, I only get one life. Mm-hmm. What do sure. I look like? tearing myself up the whole yep. way like what's you're supposed to enjoy the journey yes. i know I, I and i had to realize that i would never get to a point in life where i'll just be 100 percent good so yeah. when am i going to just pick 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 until i'm on my deathbed yeah. yeah no i'm not do, i'm not going to do that so i'm going to have and god this is something god had to tell me he was like you have to grow gracefully mm-hmm. he was like mm-hmm. i you have to have grace with yourself just as i give grace to you when you mess up it's like God would give me more grace and I would give grace to myself yep. when I mess up. And when God told me I have to grow gracefully, I'm like, ooh, that is so good. That is so it. next time I mess up or something, I'm not going to pick, pick, pick. Yes, I messed up, but I'm going to love myself enough to try again. Love That's myself good. enough to not pick with myself because how am I going to bully myself into the person I want to become? There's mm. no, there's no That's fun good. in yeah. that. There's no enjoyment in that journey life itself is a journey and it's easier to grow in love than it is to grow in exactly. hate like or even just you disrespecting yourself or being mean to yourself like it's easier for anybody or anything to grow in an environment that's filled with love but you're a part of that environment that you create for yourself so it's easier for you to grow if you are putting yourself in a loving environment Mm -hmm. if you are loving yourself but if you're constantly sending yourself so much hate and bad Mm -hmm. thoughts then it's um it's gonna be it's gonna be more of a struggle for you to grow. You and know? also, yeah. I had to realize that the thoughts I was having are not coming from God. Yeah, mm-hmm. the thoughts I have are coming from a source that's filled with hate, yeah, and envy and darkness. And this isn't God. These thoughts that I'm having about mm-hmm. myself are not God. And God would not be pleased with me thinking these thoughts about myself. Yeah. yeah. And once I realized that, I'm like. What am I doing? Literally. You know, I had to realize that, okay, and maybe I have to learn to love myself more. Maybe the more mm-hmm. I love myself, the easier it'll get. But I'm starting yeah. to get more comfortable with just being more intentional on positive words I say to myself. For Not sure. just noticing yeah. all the bad stuff I do, but noticing, oh, okay. you you stuck to what you say. Great job. Yeah. You, you said you were going to work out this morning, and you actually did it. Good job. Because I have a habit of doing that. Like, when I don't do stuff... I'll be like, oh my gosh, see, there I go again. Woo, woo. Yeah. But when I actually do something, it's like, okay, that's what you're supposed to do. Mm-hmm. No, like, congratulate yourself. Yeah. Praise, yeah. say good job. Like, speak those words into yourself, too, you know? For sure. Definitely. You don't. And the thing is, I, I still struggle with having negative self talk a lot of times. Of it, Somebody will say something about me, oh, good job on doing this, good job on making this progress. And then I'll point out the littlest thing, oh, but I didn't do this yet. Exactly. Yeah. I didn't get this done. And it's like, bro, give yourself some grace. Literally. If you give if you can give everybody else grace when they do you wrong, exactly. why can't you give yourself exactly. grace? Because you're That's teaching so people in your mind how to, how they're gonna operate when they when they are in your presence. And so mm-hmm. I realized that one thing, one major thing I realized, I'm showing up for everybody else. 
Mm-hmm. When I'm in that casket, I'm the only, only one in that casket. Yeah. Ain't nobody coming with me. Especially That's for graphics, so you showing up for people that don't even know you. They just want you mm-hmm. for your work. And I love my clients, so don't take it personally. Right. But um, yeah, you showing up for people that don't um, that don't they they need your services. And yes, y'all build a relationship over time. But if you die tomorrow, they finding another person. Exactly. So. You know, when you when you are first born, I've heard this somewhere. When you're first born, you look like your parents. And when you die, you look, look like, like your, your decisions. Oh, yeah, That's I heard that. And I so it. you definitely want to look at peace when you when you I, I remember um, this one lady. She was talking about her grandma and how her mm-hmm. grandma used to have all these wrinkles in her face and all of that. Mm-hmm. She was so stressed out when she was, you know, alive. Mm-hmm. And when she wow. when she passed away, her face. It, she said that her face literally looked as if she was younger than what she did when she was alive. Oh, and it's just wow. crazy because if you put so much stress on yourself and you keep beating yourself up, you're going to look, you're going to come, yeah. look, you're going to look like that. Your presence, your aura, mm-hmm. everything is Ooh, like yes. that is going to exude exactly. that kind of energy. Mm-hmm. You're going to talk. Zig Ziglar said this, you know, when you write down and show gratitude for what you have and, you know, you write down. <laughs> Why do I love my job? Why do I love myself? Yeah. Why do I love my family? You begin to realize the small things that you're appreciative of yeah. rather than focusing on, oh, I don't like this person because they do this. Yeah. Or I don't like this because that. You have a job. You have a mm. you have family that love you. You you love you should love yourself. Yeah. You feel me? So instead of you focusing on a negative, make that small little shift in your mind that allow you to live freely. You're gonna yeah. make mistakes. There's no way you're gonna live on earth for decades exactly. and not make no mistakes exactly. you feel me so you got to give yourself grace and bro the way you view yourself literally leaks into every single gra- <laughs> gratitude <laughs> <laughs> what's one thing you're grateful for, yeah. <laughs> no, for real. Uh, i was gonna say the way you view yourself that was so good the way you view yourself it literally affects how you show up in everything you do bro mm-hmm. your work and you said it too your mm-hmm. work your relationships everything it's gonna leak because you do the the, what you do is a reflection of how I feel like everything we do is a reflection of how we see ourselves. Yeah, you know. So for sure, I agree. Next question. Wait, Last before question. you read, okay. I got an idea. So okay, since idea. we are starting a YouTube channel, yeah. What if we? We're going to continue and do the last question. Mm-hmm. But so we can get some subscribers mm-hmm. on our new page. We can put this last question mm-hmm. on that page. What do y'all think? Okay. That would be good. But when are we starting the channel, though? Yeah, <laughs> that's the thing. Oh, yeah. Today. <laughs> but you have to, we just have I think. To, we just have to, we'll figure it I out. I mean, we'll see y'all when we post this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. continue. Do the okay, last okay. question. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hopefully it's in this episode. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so last question is, what ways do you think you've grown in the past year? Mm. I feel like I just said it. Yeah, um, because my thing was realizing what I deserve. Or I could say, well, what if we change it to what's something, how, what's the way that we're growing right now? Or what's the way that you're focusing on growing right Mm, right now? Can I, can I ask the question? Uh so. You want to ask the question or answer? I'm going to ask y'all the question. Okay. Okay. So what advice would you give a younger version of yourself? Can we answer that and what you asked? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of. Wait, well, say, ask your question again. Okay, what advice would you ask a younger version of yourself? Okay. Oh, my oh, God. What advice would you tell a younger version of yourself? Okay. Oh. It's two different questions. So. Well, we can answer this question shorter. Because mm-hmm. yeah. it's, it's straight to the point. Yeah. So what, what advice would y'all give to y'all younger self? I'll say mine. I'll make mine physical. Because uh, I want to give a different type of answer. Mm-hmm. So. I I never really talk about this, so I'm trying to think how to say it without, because it's like a sensitive topic. Mm-hmm. So when I was younger in elementary school, mm-hmm. I was I told y'all before I was like the big sister on my street. There was a girl, she was like a couple years younger than me, and she pointed something out about me that uh, I never really cared about. I was ten. I did not care, like I or I didn't think nothing of it. She pointed something out about me. She said, "Why is your whatever, whatever? Why is whatever like this? Like, why do you look like that?" Da da da. And I didn't know. And so it made me. It created this thing of where mm. I thought that there was something wrong with me. Mm-hmm. And 
through a good portion of my life from that moment all the way to I don't know, maybe what, a year or so, two years ago. Mm-hmm. I was doing all the it created such a big insecurity that mm. I was doing all of this stuff, damaging my skin, mm. trying all this stuff, doing all this stuff to myself because of something that what was she? She was like probably six at the time. Mm. That a six year old said to me and I was mm. ten. And it created a big insecurity that I carried with me. Uh, oh, my throat. <laughs> but it created a big insecurity in me that I carried with me all the way up until like a few years ago. And it was like, I just used to like try all this stuff to myself to make this insecurity go away. Mm-hmm. Um, like messing with my body, doing all of this stuff. And it grew into such a big thing. So I would tell 10-year-old Jada that you are beautiful. You are okay. You don't have to go morphing your body or trying to change your body. Like, you're okay. You're normal. Yeah. That's what I would tell myself. (laughs) And you know what was crazy? Um, Mom, if you're watching this, I love you. But my mom did not really talk to me and my sister about just regular like women women stuff so something i think that could have been solved from like if me and my mom had those type of conversations or even if i felt like i could go to her about stuff about my body Mm -hmm. i felt like that could have been solved then by her just telling me like a a mom telling you you're it's okay like you're normal or this is like you're this is normal women or girl stuff Mm -hmm. instead of me keeping since i didn't feel comfortable to talk to her about that type of stuff I just kept it to me and I went through this whole experimentation phase on my body for like years and years and years and years and years. Mm -hmm. Um, Just to, until I became an adult and realized, oh wow, I just, Mm -hmm. I did that for no reason, Mm -hmm. you know? And so I would tell myself like, you're, you're okay. Bro, that's crazy. I was just thinking like two days ago yesterday that the words are so spiritual, like, Words are so, like, I don't think we ever really realize it, but words are spiritual. Like, I could literally say something that comes from my mind Mm -hmm. that can change your whole emotion just by something I say. Isn't that crazy? Literally. Like, but the thing is, we have to have the power to, you know, not accept, you know, words that people say and stuff like that. But, yeah, it's crazy. Words are so spiritual. For Definitely. sure. I w- my younger self, I would say over time, you know how when you're a kid, you have all these, you know, things that you believe you can do and stuff. And then the older you get, you start to get mm-hmm. other people's uh, stigmas mm. applied to your life. And then you may end up believing those. Kind yeah. of example of what you said. So I would tell my younger self that you are wise beyond your years and mm. to really own your space you know not allowing people to determine who you are define who you are and telling yourself oh i'm mm-hmm. this i'm that based off of what the next person said mm-hmm. um and I, I like what you said about your mom because i even i used to think dang i really wish my mom would have you know she taught me what she raised me well you yeah know? but it's just certain things where you know my my dad wasn't in my life and so it's certain things where i would be thinking over time as I got older of like, dang, I wish my mom taught me to, you know, yeah. be completely honest with myself and completely uh, be confident in who mm-hmm. I am and speak up when I need to yeah. and not be afraid to speak up on how I feel or what I need to say. Mm-hmm. Those core values or character traits, that's what I wish I would have learned. But it's like, I can't no longer wish I'm a, a exactly, adult. I'm a young yeah. adult now. Like you, this is something that you got to do with on your own. You feel that's me? Good. So and you just have to change it, like, in the future for your own kids. That's yeah, how I change it, it in the future. And so I don't, I'm not saying, like, I love my mom. I'm not Exactly. She was a great mom. Because <laughs> yeah. she'll get up and be texting me, no, nah, I know you ain't going on that podcast or something. Yeah. <laughs> so, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm grateful for, you know, the things that she's done. But, yeah, over, over time, there's mm. just little things. But I, I, I was telling you about that, just, Yanni, uh, just – owning my space and owning who I am and not being afraid or belittling myself when, you know, another person may think, oh, that's, you know, like just anything. Mm-hmm. So I would, I would just really tell my younger self to be confident in who I am and that's know good. that you're, what you're doing, you're on the right track. Mm-hmm. 
That's what my younger self would be proud of me mm -hmm. who I am now. I done worked Man, with a what? lot of people, oh, bro. Yeah, They'll be like, you did that, bro? <laughs> That's yeah. crazy. Oh, for sure. So, yeah, that, that would be what I say. Okay. And something that, before I say mine, something that you guys said that I really like, and I actually was thinking about, early, um, like, a few days ago, mm -hmm. um, was I, I was thinking, like, if I feel like a lot of stuff that I've been through, I feel like if I had a relationship with my mom, I feel like I wouldn't even been yeah. through certain things, <laughs> yeah. you know. Um, my like I like you guys said, my grandma did a great job yeah. raising me, you know, a fantastic job. But I feel like if my mom, because I know before me and my dad had a relationship, like we started building our relationship in like middle school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Before I started building a relationship with my with my dad, I felt something missing. It's so mm -hmm. weird, but I just felt like something missing. Like I don't even know how to explain it, but I knew a piece of me needed to be filled it was the puzzle piece inside of me that needed to be completed and then that's when I met my dad and he started teaching me about entrepreneurship and getting in my purpose he's the one that started pouring mm -hmm. into me about being an entrepreneur and, and stepping in my own mm -hmm. path and stuff like that so he he poured into me in that area but I'm like what if my mom was in my in my life that I'm pretty sure certain mind battles I've been through she could have taught me that she could have taught yes. me how to overcome, overcome. she could have helped me you know what I'm saying deal with certain situations because i feel like it's something in the blood like it's a blood thing you know my my grandma did a great job but i feel like if the woman who birthed me i feel like she would just biologically know you know what i'm saying certain yeah. things because she probably been through it too yeah. you know yeah that's why I, I i thought about with my dad of like dang i wish i would have known Who's this family member? How did this happen? What have yeah. you been through yourself? That's what I realized over time. You know, sometimes w with our parents, we can hold grudges towards them and not realize that they really trying to figure out the exactly. same time they're trying to raise you up. They're doing their best they can. You know, they, they're trying to figure out how they're going to live on, how they're going to provide for you and themselves and how exactly. they're going to, how they may not even love themselves as much, you exactly. know, as they love you. And so they're trying to pour into you while still maintaining for the both of y'all yeah. and for you know you as a as a whole and make sure you're on the right track in life and you're doing better than them right. so yeah although we may have these certain feelings it's just really realizing like you know they did the best they could yeah no for and real we end up you know crazy so we should be exactly grateful. yeah yeah so All what right. about your question oh to the question or answer to the well, question? Oh, you no. answered it? No, I didn't answer it. Okay, yet. go ahead. Yeah. Um, I know I was doing a lot of talking, but I answered the question. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, I would say something I would tell my the younger version of myself is that you're set apart. Like, you're set apart. And something I realized is that my biggest battle, the thing I hated the most about myself growing up, ended up being my biggest blessing Really? Like, it's so crazy. And it's just like, it's crazy how something that I hated so much could be something that I'm so thankful for now, yeah. you know? And so I would just tell my younger self that it's going to work out. Mm -hmm. It's going to work out. I know it's painful right now. I know it's tough right now. But it's going to work out. I, I, would, I wish I would have told myself, like, stop trying to, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, fit in with the crowd. I didn't try to fit in, but it's like, it's like I naturally didn't really, like I had friends and stuff, but it's like I naturally just didn't fit in. So stop trying to like beat yourself up that you don't fit in. Cause sometimes I would get mm -hmm. mad at myself. Like, why am I not like, yes, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like fitting in a puzzle piece here, here, here. But it's like, cause that's how it's supposed to be. Guys. You was always set apart. Always yeah. set apart. Period. That's what I would have told myself. Yeah. Friend groups. I would, I would think that the older I got, dang, why well, don't. Why can't I do these certain things with these friends? Or why don't I listen to this kind of music? It's like, bro, you're you not, that's not that what's meant for yeah, you. Exactly. You feel me? So, yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> should we uh, answer it or wrap it up? Cause we should wrap it up, yeah. to be honest. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. But this was a good episode. Yeah, it, it it it. Comment down below, it. what would you tell your younger self? Or, you know, some of the questions that we asked, uh, what's 
one pivotal moment in your 20s yes. and what lesson did you learn? Yeah. And yeah. or Jada's question. Your vision, ultimate vision and purpose for being an entrepreneur. For sure. Yes. And we're going to see y'all. We're going to be back. Make sure y'all like, comment, and subscribe. Mm-hmm. And also listen to the audio. Mm-hmm. Follow us on Instagram. Do all that good stuff and engagement. Yeah, like, go through the me? list. Let's go through the no, list. Once you go to Growing Pains, you can find all of four of us. You feel yeah, me? So yeah, for sure. We ain't even about to. Right. Follow us here. Follow us there. Follow my <laughs> no, people. No, for real. <laughs> So yeah. Yeah. Thank you guys for watching. Yes. We we'll see y'all next it. week. Let's get it. Bye y'all.